just finished recording with Ben Clairfield. We discussed some of his influence from Ido Portal, Special Times with Charles, uh, getting into a little bit around neurotyping and how that fits together potentially for connective tissue training and long-term connective tissue adaptation. Uh, really interesting discussion, and I think it will be the first of many. Uh, ben is a really experienced coach. Uh, he's recently joined ATG for Coaches, um, and you can see he's uh, been working. He worked with quite a lot with Charles and went to a number of different uh, education events. I actually did that John Bros weightlifting one as well and uh, by a signature um, a few times. But yeah, he's worked with some top level athletes and, and obviously lots of other people through history. So it was a really interesting conversation and I hope you enjoy it. All right. We've got uh, Ben Clairfield here from uh, Toronto. Reach, Reach PT, Reach Gym. Yeah, Reach PT, Reach Personal Training. Um, do you, do you want to, can you give us a little bit of background just about Reach as a yeah as a, absolutely get into it. So yeah, I uh, um, my wife and I um, opened had the opportunity over a decade ago to uh, get our own facility. Um, I always uh, you know training is an ego ego business, but I actually wanted to facilitate a place that could take the client and the athlete first. So our team we have a team that we share clients. Uh, there's usually a lead trainer on the on the on the on the sort of client or athlete but we generally share so the magic of that is is that we can share scheduling which means we can really address the client's time and have them come in more so we can do we can do a better job of that instead of it being kind of like well if i'm on holiday then the athlete or the client's on holiday too but that's not the goals of the athlete or the client so that sort of has been really good at building a team i'm a big fan of teams We've trained anyone from elite level ballet dancers, one of the top in the world. She's a rehab there. She's unbelievable. Um, to NFL players, to collegiate um, basketball, uh, hockey, all kinds of different athletes. And general pop people that are obliterated in their legs and stuff. I have my little guy who just pops his head in. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so we, we just really like we're a place where people are there for serious training. And I have to say sort of on, on the realm of what, uh, brought me to you guys is is uh, the legacy of Charles Poliquin. So Charles mm -hmm. was my mentor and also a friend, uh, you know, rest in peace. And I would say this, uh, and there's a few of us around the world that I really wouldn't have anything, you know, and I did all the work. It's not like I didn't do the work and, you know, my team did the work, but but without Charles, I wouldn't be where I, where I am. Um, all his knowledge, all his help. Um, I did countless consults with him, calls. He would call me when he was on the toilet or whatever, I, you know, half naked shirt off, like, cussing out someone or whatever and it's just you know he he truly is uh you know he you know my, my youngest uh, i've named after him uh so uh yeah you know it, it's uh, i would say charles legacy but there's other people too so you know you know ido portal and sort of you know all this different stuff olympic weightlifting and all these different uh, uh coaches and trainers that are have inspired me but really fundamentally i'm, I'm with you in the sense of, of i think movement is uh is key um, so I would say that we're a place that does that. It's, it's not a uh, cookie cutter. Everything's tailor-made. And, uh, but again, we're, we're continually open to, to learning more. So I think what's, it's amazing what you've done and it's fantastic what Ben's done and the legacy of Charles lives on. And it's kind of amazing to see that. And, you know, being a part of that is, is really cool. So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I love talking strength and conditioning, talking movement, and, 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 but I think it's fundamentally connected to the individual philosophy and psychology of both the coach and the athlete. And I think that's kind of cool seeing what you do and what you've done and what Ben's doing. Um, and I, anyway, it's cool to be a part of it. Thank you. Awesome intro. And I appreciate you uh, making some, some time for us today. You definitely, you know, we've got a lot of crossover with influences and things that we've been interested in and paths that we've gone down. Um, yeah, it'd be cool to hear more about like, wh when did you get, into the Pollockin work and did you um did you go through like T Nation articles and whatnot before yeah you yeah I was very I was very lucky I have to give credit to a guy who's done this for a long time but he's more into bodybuilding and it's funny that you got you posted about Vince Geronda he, he trained with Vince Geronda and he was a Charles guy this guy Mike Demeter who's a who's a long time guy he, he was a former biker and I started training at a really crappy good life which is the sort of anytime fitness or life fitness in in Toronto and uh I looked at him and he was coming in at 5 a.m and he was done by noon with clients that were he was great and very successful and I looked at him and said what the hell are you doing man 
And he's like, listen, son, pretty much. This is over a decade ago, probably almost 14, 14 years ago, 13, 14, 14, 15 years ago. So, and he uh, sent me down and said, listen, read every single article by Charles Polico and MT Nation. That's your education. Go and do the programs upstairs and then do it with your clients and you'll get great results. And I had just gotten married and I had no money. And I told my wife that uh, I, got, I had been recommended, I just started the job. And she, and I said to her, I got to do this PICP one course. And she's like, you don't have any money. Uh, yeah, I'll put on the credit card. It's like, you're an idiot. And then it's, it was the best, best decision I've ever made. And <laughs> I did that. And then I got successful with all the stuff and then did level two and then biosignature and multiple internships mm-hmm. with Charles and Charles came to my gym mm-hmm. and times in Toronto, he would train at my gym and go for breakfast and coffee and lunch and we became very good friends. And, and literally he would call me. I'm not saying I was best friend, but I spoke to him two days before he passed and uh, and I still have all of the messages of the crazy, crazy shit he would send me. Um, and he was a very generous uh, guy. And that doesn't, I think the thing with Charles is that the people, he, the greater the crowd, the more bombastic he was. So he would say the bombastic thing and to get the point across. But if you were sitting with him on a lunch, he was extremely nuanced and subtle. And most of his answers would have been something along the lines of, it depends, um, which I actually think is is brilliant. So he had the ability to to boil down a point and make people go, you know, so someone would ask, hey, what about a vegan diet or a vegetarian? He says, absolutely. A vegan diet is absolutely fantastic as long as you have two kilos of meat a day. You know, so things like that were just super bombastic and whatever, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, you said it recently that more excuses than a pregnant nun kind of stuff. That was he was so good at that kind of stuff. But it was it was rhetorical. It was to get his point across. And then when you started digging down into the into the the nitty gritty, it was a significant quantity of it depends. Or, yes, I agree with Louis or I agree with, you know, Charlie Francis or I agree with Durando on this. And and I think you said it great. The Charles Polycon is the greatest bodybuilding coach for uh performance um for athletic performance and i think the genius of the flip side i've said the opposite often is that he's the best athletic performance person for bodybuilding and body composition i remember being in an internship in sweden with him and it was a hypertrophy camp um funnily enough with milo sarkev which is, that was an interesting whole shebang uh, not my cup of tea but he was a super nice guy um and that's why I gravitate to you because it's the athletic, you know, athletic truth group as opposed to the bodybuilding. But that again, like we can't hate on Arnold because he brought all of us are getting paid because of Arnold. So, you know, and then Charles. But I think the, the fascinating thing was he had a significant quantity of uh, coaches that, you know, 6% body fat, women at 8% body fat, like phenomenal shape and can pump out volume. They were relatively strong because Charles made people strong, but they couldn't jump. And to me, it was phenomenal. And I, coming from basketball and athletic performance, I could jump. Um, not like then, but hey, you know, like at, when I was 19, I could dunk. Not anymore, but hey, I'd like to get it back at 40. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah. you know, at, at, five, at 5'10", I'm 40, I'm turning 41. Yeah. So I'd like yeah. to be able to dunk again, but you know, hey, like, I think it's, it's cool that I, I'll do it. But I, you know, I think it's, it was really interesting seeing people in phenomenal shape, but that couldn't do the athletic stuff. So he said, listen, if you're going to get any athletes, you have to demonstrate this. And it was a cool thing to see guys that were really into body comp and he forced them to do athletic stuff. So I think that gets back to the idea of Charles and movement and this kind of stuff. And some of the stuff I was sort of, I don't know if you knew or not, but there was a lot of stuff that Charles would do Jefferson curls, but it wasn't in the same strategic, What it was strategic, but it wasn't in the same way as the way Ben is doing it and the way you guys are doing it. So there was flexibility, but it wasn't, I agree with you. He did say he wished he devoted himself more to that, but there, there was that there in the sense that for some athletes and different programs, you would say, okay, you're going to do this. Yeah. Exercise. Well, he, and people would look and be like, what? And it'd be like a Jefferson's curl or rounded back. Good morning. And people would be like, yeah. what, why are we doing that? That's crazy. But he would do that. Yeah. But it, yeah, it, it was, wasn't as systematic yeah. as you guys, as you guys are talking about. I think the big one is the actually the sissy squat, you know, which I think, you know, Geronda was a fan of the sissy squat, yeah. right? Yeah. I yeah. wonder why that didn't make it into Charles's uh, vocabulary. Because yeah. um, he, he had that, um the machine that, yes. is that, you know, but that doesn't stretch the quad. No, it's like exactly, thing. exactly. 
I think in some ways he got like, you know, I would make fun of him. He got, you know, he would get a new toy and I would make fun of him and I would say, you know, hi, my name is Charles Poliquin. I am a, you know, I am a, a toy, a holic. I bought another Atlantis toy or another, you know, I have a problem. It's been three months since my last purchase of a toy, you know, and he would laugh because it's true because he would get stuff sent to him and he'd like playing with that. And he enjoyed the bodybuilding. Like, I think there's a significant quantity of us that are Charles guys that are like bodybuilding. That's just stupid. And there's a significant quantity of body comp guys that are like athletic performance. Yeah, I don't care. Give me 6, 12, 25. I want to get shredded. And in his genius was he was absolutely into and sympathetic to the bodybuilding world. Whereas I'm, I'm on this style of like, well, if you can move better, I don't care how I look. But he was like, no, you need to care how you look because it's connected to, to performance. And to the other ones, it's no, you need to care how you move because it's connected to how you look. So, so he was a genius in that aspect, I think. So, but, but the toy stuff, he was always into toys. So I think in some ways, when you're forced to not use toys, you, you, you come up with that. that. I mean, this is the brilliance of Udo Portal. We talked a little bit. Um, and Udo, I talked. To, I got into Udo Portal because of Charles. So, so it really, Udo gave credit to Charles. So it's kind of an interesting amalgam. And it, but I think that's an interesting thing to talk to you about your programming and how you. We we're talking about this a little. The differentiation between, um, I'm sorry, the baby's crying because he's okay. But uh, the uh, okay, great. So so the different the the differentiation between. Um, tendon and ligament training in some ways is, I was thinking about this, is it's difficult to stick to programs that are tendon and ligament training because they take more time. And if you're neurologically made up to be bored by shit, if you want to call it, you know, neurotype or whatever you want to, Charles calls it, Thibodeau calls it, different people have different conceptions of it. Um, it's harder to stick to stuff. And I found that a difficult thing with me when probably my tendons and ligaments need stuff because it's connected to, if it takes much longer, you don't portal program is like this. And I'm not divulging anything, but if you're going to be good connective tissue that you have to love doing stuff for longer. And obviously if you're a basketball player, like a joke, one of my NFL players said, well, yeah, I mean, you never want to play basketball one because he was six, four and that wasn't tall enough. And two, he's 280 pounds and that's way too big. So he just likes hitting people's. And the other thing is, if you're a basketball player, you got to love shooting jump shots. It's like, I just want to dunk on people. I don't want to shoot jump shots all day. So to get significant, you know, obviously a significant athlete that played on the Atlanta Falcons and the Dolphins, you know, he's a professional NFLer, absolute freak. You know, dunking wasn't hard. That was, you know, at 280 pounds, he could fly and smack the shit out of people. But he's like, basketball, I don't like shooting jump shots. You know, you have to love shooting hundreds of thousands of jump shots a day. So Ben clearly, you know, I play basketball, but not at Ben's. Anyway, but the point is you have to love shooting jump shots. So in some ways, if you love doing the same shit again and again, and then again, in some ways, it seems to be conducive to tendon ligament stuff. Whereas if you like that pop of hitting hard, give me neurological one to five reps explode. Like you like Olympic lifting. I like that too. Like give me a one rep, give me two reps. And it's like, but the thing is, is that as Charles says with his fire type stuff, you got to change the stuff. So in some ways, I think it's it's finding a hard balance. Like, how do you force yourself to do the shit that you need to do, even though your neurological type isn't doesn't love it? And that's something I've had trouble. It's like, okay, do you know the you know do the couch stretch again? And I'm like, oh, fine, but you know. <laughs> anyway, that's my uh, on that note. That uh, yeah. was sort of a. I've actually personally, uh, I've, I, I'm not I'm not a couch stretcher. I could never make myself do it. Um, yeah. I've, I've done it about three times in my life, but um, I have come up like basically the single leg um, human knee extension. If you just put yourself in that bottom position, I find that more palatable. Um, it's right. stronger and I can, yeah, I can kind of chill out there where I just don't, I just don't make myself uh, couch stretch. But um, anyway, the, I think what we're getting to Ben is a really important conversation. I mean, one part of this is, you know, periodization and neurotyping and, and, and that side of things, personality, where does that come into programming, which I think is a really important conversation. The other thing is like, could we periodize connective tissue development and, right. and, and how would you program that? And I don't think anyone's right. ever and tried. I was thinking about that. that. Yeah. No, one, no one's ever tried to answer that question publicly, you know, to my knowledge. Um, yeah, I was I trying to think say, about some of the, pro sorry, go ahead. 
yeah, no, like I, I just think there's there probably are a few, quite a few different methods there. There probably are ways to look at that um, that that you know that would work for people who aren't necessarily going to jump on twelve week cycles because a lot of athletes aren't going to be on twelve week cycles just by the nature no. of their sport and and, and their yeah. games and their travel and their pre seasons and and whatnot. So there's no choice but to play with the ATG online formula, which is great for what it's made for. Um, but a pro athlete is going to do it differently just because they have their other schedule to plug in on top of that. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is really important stuff that like, yeah. that's why these conversations need to happen. That's why this community needs to exist. And, you know, this is going to evolve and that's, what's exciting to me. Yeah, no, I think that's an interesting thing. I think, so I was thinking about from a quote unquote fire type, whatever you, dopamine, whatever you want to call it as yeah. I'm that, um, and I'm in a significant quantity of explosive athletes are that thinking about how you would do it in two to three week blocks but like it's all about cheating it, it you know in some ways it's like we're doing the same thing again and again and again until you get good so split squats three times a week man you're gonna get good at split squats you know also squat every day also that's the genius of german volume training for squatting which you know you've talked about wolfgang wolfgang unsold uses 10 sets of 10 back squat because guess what you're gonna do 100 squats as a beginner rather than three sets of 10 three sets of 12 well, you're gonna do you know you're going to nearly, it's not going to be necessarily at 60% or 70% of RM, but you're going to re, you know, re gear that. So you use the continuation of doing the thing again and again and again and again. And you're going to get good at it. Um, but I think in some ways, tricking the brain to feel like it's different. And, you know, Carl talked about the repping. So if you did five sets of five split squats, well, you know, Monday you could do, I've used this with athletes. You do Monday is, is dumbbell split squats, you know, uh, um six reps wednesday is barbell five reps friday is low yeah, pulley or whatever back, right like yeah, oh exactly. it's different it's still a split squat i think these are ways of tricking the thing yeah i think like there's when you bring it into an in-person environment or you know working with someone one-to-one -one, then as an experienced coach like those nuances are not you know, there's no challenge with bringing those that variety in, and I, I'm really confident that you're going to get similar, if not slightly better, results from that. You know, increase in variation, with the caveat of if you keep playing with all the variables all the time, then you probably won't stick to right. that goal of like having more right. than body weight split squat, and then right. you know, ultimately, like that's you're not going to get to the place you want. So the simplicity definitely has its benefit and then i i think there's all those just those slight changes like even just tempos right like just right. going slow on the way down pausing in the bottom pausing in the middle right. um i love those variations and um i think that that all definitely does you know have its place i like the idea of the first you know year just being like just practice these movements over and over again like i think that the genius right. of atg online is is really in that simplicity where it's just so brutally right. simple that you either do it and you get crazy good results and you jump again and you feel great right. or you don't do it um right. and, and you're not going to be testing you're not going to be challenging your connective tissues to the same degree like it's deliberately smooth and safe and and it's you know some of the adjustments that we've made for example in like the execution of the nordic We've made it less explosive out of the bottom. I don't know how long have you kind of been tuning into I just, in ATG? I'd say probably a month and a month and a bit. So like you know, okay. I mean, but I've watched pretty much every. So it's kind of yeah. I mean, I'm new to it. So oh, like in that sense, eighty months ago, it's quite different. Yeah. Like there were there were quite a few different nuances within the movements, and um, we were blowing up a few hamstring tendons, and I, I actually experienced that myself. Um, and I was sort of jumping in with what Ben was doing because I could see that he cracked this code with the knees. But then it turned right. out that he didn't have exactly the same dexterity of thinking with other parts of the body because the knees is right. where he really had his trouble. So he solved that better than I've seen anyone solve. Right. It makes knees. sense to me. I, I think the things that make sense to me that he's doing that I haven't seen, even with Charles, and I'm giving credit where credit's due, is sort of the obsessive nature of rep repetition at what you sort of talked about at a two, three out of five, right? Like. Like, and there's genius in that. And if you're a dopamine fire guy, you're like, this shit's boring. Give me a five. And and there's genius in that in the sense that you can continue 
to hit connective tissue at a two three. I think that's I think you articulated that well. I think that's the articulation of what he's doing. Um, and there's and, and that's the point. The point is, how do you trick a dopamine guy to do the shit at a two three? that's going to allow him to do the fives when he wants to do the fives. And that's, I yeah. think, the brilliance. And I think that's the nuance that we're discussing, which is, you know, I, I think there's, and I'm, I need, the, you know, I need to yeah. do, you know, how long I stay on, 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 you know, the, the, the first program and jump to dense and, you know, like, yeah. like, like I'm debating in my head, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, one so, of the guys was talking about that he does, uh, I think he's saying he does two, three weeks of zero and then does two or three weeks yeah. of dense and he's going back in between them, accumulation intensification. Right, um, right. For him, that's accumulation intensification relatively because right. there's weight and dense. Correct. But then that will yeah. get to a point where, you know, dense is more of an accumulation program and standards right. might be as intensification. And right. as a right. coach, like for me, the genius, like Ben says, you know, when we've had these conversations, we've sort of, Ben's basically said, look, programming, like, I don't care. Just choose the right movements right. and keep getting right. better at those movements. And right. it's like executing a back somersault. Like if you make your back right. somersault more and more snappy, um, then, you know, you that's right. it. Like that's the thing. So um, there is to like... To me the interesting... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, I was... Uh, yeah, I, I just... I think for for you, it, it really doesn't... You know, it's about... If we have that leaderboard there, I think that's what's going to make the difference for you of like, okay, I'm going to progress through this stuff and I'm going to get back to sprinting and I'm going to get back to dunking and you're going to put yourself in the position where you can do that stuff. And, you know, I think that is what's going to light up the the dopamine types and the competitive types, which a lot of the guys who join the community are like, you know, but the, and the carrot for the athlete is look this is 20 30 minutes and then you know you get to go feel amazing like you know you get exactly. to go dunk you get to go sprint you feel bulletproof you feel like you can run through a wall um whether rather than trying to make the weight training the reward where as us coaches like that's the thing of like we get stuck on this thing of the weight training being the reward right. and then we can't even go and play that tennis or do that jumping session or sprint or whatever because We've been doing all this four four zero x zero training, right. and then it's right. just not there anymore. You know, right? No, that that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think the thing that sort of rekindled, you know, because it's there's new. I'm not saying there isn't new, but in some ways, it's sort of the fire of Charles. Is I see it in different people, which is amazing to me. But I think what's fascinating with what Ben did, what really kicked it into me, is his absolute obsessive love of the split squat. And hey, I've t I used to have this line to all of my coaches that that work with me. If you ever get bored of teaching people the split squat, quit training. So I've said that to my coaches, and this is something I've said for a decade plus. So, so to me, seeing Ben be like split squat, yeah. But the other thing is, I remember in some ways the thing with Charles is, is, is he's like, look, everyone should be able to do. Because I remember this, he said everyone should be three sets of eight perfect split squats on the floor with the barbell on your back before you squat. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, cool story, Charles. I'm gonna squat. So this is back to where Charles said it all. And Ben's like, no, remember that thing that Charles said, three sets of eight, perfect back barbell, back squat, barbell, split squat, foot on the floor, perfect. He, you know, ass touching your heel, back leg straight, then you deserve to squat. It's like, but then you're doing a training camp and people can barely split squat, but it's like, all right, uh, 10-0-X, 10 10-0-X-O with, with hooks, let's go. Because it's a, it's a week of hypertrophy. And then you're like, well, I'm gonna do what I did in the hypertrophy camp. But people, so Charles sort of let you address your own issues. It's like, look, like if you haven't done that stuff, it sucks for you. You suck. Address it on your own. If not, you're going to eat it. So I seeing Ben be like, listen, everyone should be in the position where they can get to rear foot elevated split squat back. But that's going to take a year for some people, or maybe two. That's okay. But you shouldn't say, oh well, I'm never going to get that. No, if you're going to take ownership, extreme ownership of your body, you should get there. Like that should be something that you could you should get to. And if not, you suck. It's the same thing in chin-ups. If you can't do chin-ups as a human, you suck. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means your body sucks. Okay, so if you can't do 12 chin-ups perfectly, that was Charles's point. He's like, well, these are standards. That's why I thought, you know, standards. Yeah. And in some ways, that's what Charles held up. It's, look, you know, the Homer Simpson line. It's like, just because everyone, that's normal. If Homer Simpson is normal, who cares? Yeah. Like, so let's set a standard for what the human body can achieve at your level. Like, you know, you and I maybe are never playing in the NFL. Sorry, like, 
yeah, like those dudes, that's a whole nother ball game. You know, maybe, you know, Ben, you know, maybe now he could play in the NBA a different ball game, but it is what it is, you know, but it's, uh, it's, you know, understanding that aspect, but saying, okay, I'm going to take me and do the best I can, but saying, okay, there's a standard, let's get to that. But obviously it'll take work. And so the, the magic is the discussion of connective tissue, because that's where it is. But that's the thing is how do you trick to me? The conversation is like, how do I trick myself into doing the shit that's good for me? And I think in some ways, some people, there's some people that have done the same program for 10 years and then they come to you. How did you do the same thing for 10 years and not shoot yourself? But there's the people that are like, I change every week. And you're like, well, how did you get any progress if you change every week? Unless you're a freak neurological. But yeah, I think that's a fascinating thing to see, you know, Ben's obsessive, you know, the split squat, get it, make it, obviously with other stuff, but make the split squat perfect. And that was Charles. I mean, that's, he said it, but he didn't show it the way Ben is showing it. So I think in some ways, and then having the articulation of the discussion of connective tissue, that to me is what's very cool about what Ben's doing. Obviously, you're doing is facilitating that. Why do you think Charles said that? Did he, you know, in terms of the split squat? Like I know it was there in my PICP one. I had Derek Woodski present yeah. that. He already had a 40 yeah. inch vertical jump before he went yeah. to Charles. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't presented. Yeah, in but way yeah, but he was under Judd. But he, I mean, he had Judd teaching him. So yeah. it's not like Judd's a Charles guy. Judd's, you know, Charles took Judd to the Olympic. Like you know, so he's but not Derek like he had, had Charles. Part. Derek had serious, track and stuff. you know, yeah. he was very strong, very neurological, yeah. but I'm not yeah. sure he saw the, the need for the, you know, the way I saw the Peterson step up and the split squat yeah. was like, this is stuff you can do now. Let's go squat. Like that's my recollection of it. And it's probably yeah. like, I was probably a young coach and just wanted to, you know, but like, it didn't strike me at all where Ben, it's like, no, that's the program. Like, if you squat, right. then whatever. But the program is right. get good at Petersons, get good at split squats. Like, what did, what was your just, like, what, what it, or what, how do you justify or what did you see from Charles around, like, why is that split squat so important? Like, why, why should someone go so far with it or at least get to three sets of eight? He, he just said, I mean, it was in his mind as range of motion as king. Yeah. Like range of motion is king. Like he said, the rep is king and the rep is always king. But I think the thing that I've talked with some of the coaches and there's a lot of garbage out there. It's how do you coach? That's what's cool about seeing what Ben's doing and what you're doing and what we do and what some of my, my friends, you know, Preston Green is a very good friend of mine in Florida and he does unbelievable stuff with these guys that are freaks. And my very good friend, Dave Lawrence and my friend Malcolm Gwilym does hockey players and NFLers. And, and we've all talked about this where there's not many guys that are obsessed with the rep. It's, it's not just the quantity of reps, but it's the quality of the rep. And that's the magic of Charles. So if he's coaching you and you've had him coach you, it's okay, well, if that's what's called as garbage, we're going to make it better. Now, he gives you the tools to do that. And then what you have to do is you have to move on and say, okay, well, I'm going to get it to put flat on the floor with half body weight, full body weight. Um, so, so that's the thing that Charles said is that he, he gave you the tools and he said it, and then you're sort of like off on your own, explore. So he also gave so much. So you could become obsessed with 61225 and watch someone do garbage split squats. And they're like, yeah, 61225, because they would become obsessed with split or German body comp. Yeah, but you're not doing the squat properly. So you need remedial work. You need your split squats. You need a structural balance phase. So he always talked about structural balance. So that was always there. So it's not like that wasn't there in that end. It was more along the lines of he gave you the, the tools and then you could either take it like Ben's taking it and push it. I mean, he always said stuff like get lean before you put muscle on, but then people would forget that. And you're kind of like, well, life and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And, and then people wouldn't get lean and they would do 10 sets of one, you know, and get strong. But so, so he said a ton of stuff that you could take, but not, but people wouldn't do. So he did say that about the split squat and then took that to magical effect, right? But he's also taking hamstring work, right? He, and I think in some ways it's an interesting thing because I have, you know, a few pieces of Atlantis magical leg curl stuff, which is a conversation. But if you're doing stuff like Ben saying, look, you don't need equipment. You don't need equipment, but some equipment's really good. Like I have a Tibias machine. It's really good from Atlantis. Like we were, I, I'm talking about that. It's great, but you can do it without it. So in, in some ways, my gym is pretty expensive. Like I've got Charles's Watson dumbbells. I have the ones that say strength center on them from him. It's kind of an amazing thing. And Ben just got his. So it, you don't need all of the tools, but they're pretty awesome. So I think that's the thing is people get obsessed with the tools and forget the movement. But sometimes you can get into the position where you sort of forget, forget 
forget that, that the tools are good too. And I think that's what Charles, he had so much, he gave so much. So people get obsessed with the Watson dumbbells, but then not do a bench press properly with the dumbbell. It, you know, fundamentally, you still have to remember their tools, but they're really cool tools, right? So I, I really like no, what Ben's doing about the person. Ben had a really nice gym. Weight. Yeah, he, he had a really nice gym. I think he just wants that 12-year-old kid to be able to, you know, his 12-year-old self was buying all these dunk programs and getting messed up, and, right. and he wanted to have that solution out there. But he's definitely not against, and, and we're going to be, you know, we're working on like an ATG gym format of like, if your budget's here, then this is what gear you have. And if your budget's here, then this is what gear right. you have. And yeah. All right. We better wrap this yeah. up because we could talk forever. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, strength absolutely. Up. I appreciate your time, Ben. And yeah, I'm looking forward Thank to, to chatting more and covering more absolutely. together. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. We'll chat again soon.